Welcome to uh, St Francis Church this Sunday and uh, I'm just going to pray before we look at Acts 6. Lord I just pray that you might open our minds and our hearts to you now and that your spirit might be with each each of us watching this now. Amen. So it's been a long time hasn't it lockdown and uh, who would have thought that we would still be doing this in July um, but we are as things uh, lighten up a bit maybe uh, things will begin to change a little bit but let's uh, uh, see how we do as we uh, we look at Act 6 now. Now there was a hospital about 20 years ago uh, in South Africa um, and uh, there was one particular bed uh, within a ward that become known as the bed of death. Um, pati patients just kept dying uh, when placed in the bed and one day a young doctor um, eager to start his rounds um, early uh, arrived, arrived at the ward um, before his colleagues and he couldn't believe what he saw. Within the small ward was a cleaner uh, and he was doing a wonderful job uh, of cleaning the floors with a polisher. However, to polish the floor, he had to plug his polisher in. So he'd unplugged the plug on the wall and got on with his job. The plug though he'd, un he'd taken out and the one he always took out was the plug for the ventilator for the bed of death. Mystery solved. Now we'll come back to that story <clears throat> in a bit. But first to our story today from Act 6. It makes the heart warm, doesn't it? To know that even in the early church, the members could fall out and disagree. And that they're arguing over money. You know, this, this might seem a little obscure, you know, almost like uh, it's been taken from the minutes of the early church PCC. But it does have something to tell us. It has something to tell us as the church of God in Luton today. And the first thing is that their practical is important. Yeah, you know, the apostles don't just turn to the congregation and say, you know, we're about God's business. Don't bother us with those trifles. Instead, they realise that the matter needs to be dealt with. You know, Christianity, being part of God's church, is not a call to walk around with your head in the clouds. You know, caring for the church is an important job. Also note, in the, in the choosing of the people, you know, uh, the, the job, you know, for the job, the apostles don't just look for a practical person. A practical qualification you know who's the accountant let's use them you know the qualification that the apostles are looking for is those who are full of of, of the Holy Spirit and wisdom they also don't say well who's got the most money will you will appoint them treasurer it's kind of the trick the uh, conservative party seem to do quite often you know a bit like uh, when, when, when I was a kid, you know, it was always the kid who owned the football who got to be the captain. And the two kids who turned up with the gloves, they got to be goalies. Even if they weren't the best person for the job, they got it. But the apostles don't appoint like this. These jobs are important and they, won't, they, they want not just capable or resourced people, but those with the same heart. Those who are full of the spirit and wisdom. You know, they don't divide the spiritual and the practical. The two are interlinked. And these jobs are important. In 1 Corinthians 12, Paul writes of the church as a body with many parts. Not just many parts, but many different parts. And he warns against giving greater honour to some parts than others as all have a function. You know, it's easy to honour the leader <clears throat> or the preacher, but to forget the organiser and the treasurer. But each though had their vital part to play. You know, these practical roles within the church are important. And even this early church needed its bureaucracy. You know, no one should ever say, oh, I just make the teas or I just clean the church. All are vital roles. 
all are worthy of honour, whether they be back room or front and centre. And whatever their job is, I can guarantee God has one for everybody. You know, there's no spare parts in this body. You know, no one is the appendix, the useless part. Everyone's got a part to roll. No one's the appendix. And if you haven't got a role, well, why not? Now, what could you do? What is God calling you to do? Sometimes we step back. Oh, well, you know, I don't like to put myself forward. But if God's telling you, if you feel God is saying, do this, do that. We're all a part of this church. And if one of us isn't doing our bit, then the whole body isn't working properly. Now, there is a second part, a uh, second point even that I take from this, uh, this passage. And that is that the apostles realised they couldn't let the practical tasks get in the way of their main goal. You know, they say this, it is not right for us to neglect the preaching of God's word in order to handle the finances. You know, Jesus didn't come to earth so that a well -run that we could have a well-run institution with lovely buildings, wonderful programs, a good website and a successful social media feed. Jesus came instead because God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him may not die but have eternal life. He came to save the world and these institutions may help that, but they are not the goal. You know, our story from the start showed an institution, an institution even, that lost its focus. You know, the cleaner was cleaning to keep patients safe and well, but his focus became the cleaning and doing that really well. A clean hospital is useful, but if it kills its patients in the process, it's lost its purpose. Its first purpose should have been the safety of patients. A church run wonderfully with cash in the bank and a great reputation, but that does not have all of these focused on the mission fails. Yeah, the apostles knew they had to proclaim the good news about Jesus. That was their focus. And they refused to let other things take them away from that. You know, we should always ask, is our focus as a church being taken away from that primary mission? Have we unplugged the ventilator because we want to build an institution? The practical jobs need to be done. But do they focus towards the central mission or away from it? <clears throat> this is not to say that the central mission is only served by preaching. You know, our very own St. Francis said, preach the gospel at all times and if necessary, use words. It's not all about preaching, but it is about keeping that central aim of proclaiming God's love at the centre. The message must be central to all we do. We aren't called to just be a holy huddle or well-meaning social group, but God's people on earth proclaiming his good news and salvation. Now that might just seem a bit of a big job. Now I saw a docu another docu a documentary film, uh, Touching the Void recently, um, and it tells the story of two climbers who set out to climb an unconquered uh, face of a mountain in Peru. No idea why they do that. Last thing I'd do with my time, I could, you know, pull my nails out instead of that. But there we go. That's what they wanted to do. And they struggled to the top. They eventually got to the top of this, of this mountain. And then they began their climb down. When disaster struck, one of the climbers fell and broke his leg. Now, even though the other, other climber should really have left him at that point, he didn't. 
and he, he, used the, he used the ropes and he began to lower his fellow climber down a couple of hundred feet at a time. After a while though, a blizzard came in and the injured climber is lowered over the edge of the mountain and left hanging and just, just hanging there, can't go up, can't go down. And eventually, the, his fellow climber, not being able to pull him up, not being able to lower him down, has to cut him loose. And he falls 80 feet into a crevasse. And his friend makes his way down from the mountain, believing he's dead. Amazingly though, the fall didn't kill him. And over the next four days, with a badly broken leg, no food and dehydration, he made his way down to the base camp and rescue. The climber dragged himself down the mountain, you know, with his bones grating together in absolute agony. And he described how he'd set himself a target. Like in 20 minutes, I'll get to that boulder over there. In another 20 minutes, I'll get around the boulder and so on. Yeah, he couldn't envisage a target like, I'll get down the mountain to the base camp. He just couldn't imagine that. But those small targets, he could. And as he agonizingly dragged his broken leg over a glacier and a boulder field, he focused on those little targets. But each was towards that goal, that goal of his base camp and survival. You know, our goal is God's kingdom. But that might just seem a little bit too big, a bit impossible. You know, we're stuck up on the mountainside at the moment. So we need to pick a target and move to that. But each one needs to be moving towards the goal. You know, are the things we do a distraction from our mission? The things we do as a church distracting us. If they are, we need to shed them. You know, once off the glacier, our mountaineer, he dumped virtually all of his kit because it was just weighing him down. He needed it on the mountain, but now in the boulder field, he didn't need it. He didn't need it any longer. Are there things in our church that just weigh us down? that turn us away from our goal. So let us be like that church in Acts, honouring all the roles. You know, let us each take up the role that's appointed to us by God, because there's no appendixes in the body of the church. There's no spare parts. And let us stay focused on the mission he gave us and the gospel he gave us to proclaim. I'm just gonna pray. Dear Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your early church. I pray that you might help us to value each, each other. I pray that you might help us to find the jobs you have for us within your church. But most of all, I pray Lord, that you might keep us focused on the mission you have for your people. Amen. Thank you.